Good morning, good evening, wherever you're tuning in from. It's your boy, Coach T, as always. Uh, thank you for tuning in to our second episode of Pickering FC Cal Talks. I'm joined, as always, with my amazing co-host, Tammy. Tammy is our All Abilities Program Coordinator, and today we have a very special show and a very special guest. We have Josh Brown joining us. Josh is a member of the Canadian Wheelchair Basketball Team. Josh, man, I'm super excited to have you on board. Uh, growing up, basketball was never my thing. I don't know what it was, <laughs> the hand-eye coordination thing, or it just wasn't for me. But with that said, man, I'm super excited to know to get to know more about you, get to know more about your sport. So thank you for taking the time out of your day to be here with us. Thank you for having me, man. I'm really excited. <laughs> So I guess just to kick things off, man, for the people watching and for us as well, who is Josh Brown? Uh, what do you want to tell them about yourself? Um, I don't know. I've, um, I'm 20 years old. Uh, I'm from Manitoba. You know, I've loved basketball since I was uh, born, basically. You know, I've always been a huge basketball guy. I was a Steve Nash fan and a Dwayne Wade guy when I was young. Um, but, yeah, like, I just – everything about me, like, ever since I started playing wheelchair basketball, I just knew it was for me, you know. Like, it just – feels right for me and you know like just being able to meet some amazing guys like throughout my time as a basketball player like I've been places and seen people and met people and just had great experiences so yeah that's awesome and you, you get your role models and then the sport takes you down down that path of life so that's pretty cool man uh what you said you started playing basketball at a young age Where, did you play any other sports or was it just basketball uh, yeah, I actually had uh, the opportunity to play a lot of different sports um, because I, yeah, I got to play uh, different sports like soccer and um, soccer, badminton, track, uh, volleyball and different other sports like that throughout my school and things like that. Um, I had a lot of fun, you know, learned a lot of things and I actually had the opportunity. My dad coached me almost every single sport, which is awesome because. Oh, wow. Yeah, he really taught me a lot and things like my dad really got the opportunity when he was uh, younger to play football and he was a. Uh, really big coach football and so he, learned, he taught me a lot so uh yeah it was really it was a really good opportunity oh i can relate to that you know <laughs> your father as a coach and your father you know it's yeah, not yeah. pressure no yeah. I can't it's a lot of that. a lot of bonding time together <laughs> yeah for it sure is. it is that's awesome um so what age or how did you find out about wheelchair basketball um so when i was younger i played uh sledge hockey um, for Manitoba and um, through that uh, like it was a uh, the Manitoba like um, program it's kind of combined like the sports are really connected to each other so um, through we sledge hockey I found the opportunity they were talking about uh, Canada games uh, wizard basketball Canada games and Manitoba has always went to Canada games and that year that they were talking about it um, our team had kind of gotten uh, like our, our team kind of aged out, right? So the, the age max for Canada Games in Manitoba is 23, or for Canada Games in general is 23. And our whole Manitoba team kind of had gone because they're all aged out. So they were trying to make a whole new team and they wanted a bunch of kids to come in just to try it out, right? And I don't know, I really enjoyed basketball. So I was like, hey, why not try something new, right? And I really loved it. And ever since then, you know, I, I loved it ever since, so yeah. Pretty cool. Do you, you think you ever... that they have a tough time recruiting um, athletes? For the right. program, do you think that they have a tough time recruiting new athletes to the program? Um, for Manitoba, yeah, it's a really, it's actually a really tough thing. So it's funny you say that because I last time I was in Manitoba, I was talking to my coach who I've known since the beginning. His name is Jared Jaworski. He's a great man, great man, great coach. Um, taught me a lot. It's been a big part of my life, and um, he actually uh, was telling me, telling me stories about his recruiting days because I remember, like, I he never told me this when I was younger, but he used to go back back in like to like schools and stuff and just like find kids who were in like noticeable disabilities and would just come up to them and be like oh hey you want to try these sports and he'd go up to like many <laughs> schools and many kids and like grocery stores he met he one of our players he met at a grocery store he went up to his mom or her mom really? and was like oh would your kid like to try wheelchair basketball and she's like yeah sure and then they ended up playing so like that was a big issue for us and the fact that we had Jared as such a good coach willing to do these things it was great and we actually, yeah, now our program's pretty big. We have a crazy junior program. We have over 15 kids, I think, right now. And our Manitoba program, like, we played in the last two Canada games. And, I mean, we hadn't had a lot of success, but I think we did. I mean, we played well. We did as much as we could. And we didn't win medals, but that's not necessarily what it's about, you know. It's about having fun. Yeah. So, I think we did what we could sure. with our age. Our age. 
Jap was not great, so he did well. Um, and did Jarrett also encourage you to participate in a marathon? Yeah, yeah. So when I was so when I was younger, Jarrett was uh, really into us training. Really, like he wanted us to train really hard, and he was saying the marathon would be a really good opportunity for us to <laughs> just push, right? So well, it's a nice decided, bonding opportunity for you guys as a team. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, like, the training awesome. that would be involved in that is significant. Like the upper body strength <laughs> that you need to develop for that. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so we did two, we did two, actually two different events. Um, I, the first time I did the half marathon and yeah, like you said, we just, it was a great time. Actually, we went with our whole team and we did the whole half marathon, like several times before the actual event with each other. And we like did it through the rain actually too, a couple of times. Cause we were like, really, we really wanted to do it. We really wanted to train and we were young and we just wanted to do what we could. And so we did. And then the year after that, we did it again. And I did the full marathon and I was, uh, I was the only one to do it in a wheelchair basketball chair. The rest of them all had track chairs. So, um, yeah, that was really, oh my that was goodness. really, yeah, it was a good moment for me. Actually, it was really hard because it's like, it was 26 miles or something like that. And like halfway through my whole body, I, my back was just broken and like, I was just hurting. So like, I was happy I finished and I was really proud of myself, but, uh, yeah, it was a good moment. Did, did the group stay together as a pack or was it very competitive and you guys kind of did <laughs> As, went as fast as you could um for our team we're, we're pretty competitive with each other to be honest like we're we, we like to go against each other like be fast at each other um it was we stuck together some of us stuck together i remember the first one i did um there was a, a man who used to play for manitoba his name is steve hayward um he was a really good player um he almost he was on the i think the junior national team maybe back back in the day um but he okay. he did it with me he was older he was like he was in his 30s and he had like he had been pushing a lot like he's super strong but like it's been a while and i remember in the middle of the in the middle of the um event his foot plate broke and so he doesn't he doesn't like he can't use his legs right so his legs were like attached to the foot plate so the, when his right. foot plate broke his legs had to just hang so he every time he pushed his legs would like fly back and wow. forth as he pushed and so i just remember how hard it was for him to finish and it was just it was oh really fun and like yeah like you said it was just a great moment to like spend with the boys and everybody and it was, really it was fun how did that feel on your hand i'm just curious um, like did, were they blistered did you wear you must have worn gloves to protect your hands but that's that's a lot of pushing too on on a wheelchair and it's not an easy to move wheelchair it's a wheelchair basketball yeah wheelchair. yeah it's definitely it's definitely not easy like even after a practice, we usually have blisters. But um, for that, we the first one I did, I did half marathon. I didn't wear gloves just because uh, I don't know. I wasn't really sure what I was getting into yet. But uh, the second <laughs> one, I did wear uh, football gloves, like uh, sticky gloves, so that um, even in the rain, like it would actually help my hands. Oh, um, smart. I actually ended up wrecking the gloves because I pushed so much. They ended up like the whole material ripped off the front, and they were like oh, brand new gloves. Yeah, so it was oh, no. not great. That's pretty cool. I can't even imagine the strain. I mean, yeah, I run, but marathons, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's next. That's next thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you mentioned uh, you guys have a junior program, and I'm assuming you guys have a senior program. It yeah. seems like a pretty well developed program. How do how do get kids growing up want to get? How do they get involved in the program? Um, so most of the time when you come through the uh, program, the process is kind of interesting. So you usually start through your provincial program. Um, so if you make your provincial team, you'll go to like Canadian wheelchair basketball league tournaments, or you'll go to Canada games, you go to many different events like that. And then um, through those tournaments, like we usually have like the coaches of like the national teams there and like um, Fro Mike Frogley, he goes to most of those things um, because he's very involved with uh, different programs and he's actually... He's one of the main guys who really gets involved with the juniors. Like he really like he goes to each province and he does camps with kids and stuff. Like he came to Manitoba. I know he knows goes to Nova Scotia or he used to when before COVID happened, of course. Um, but he did, yeah, he does like different camps and stuff. And you kind of just get involved through the province provincial, and then as you develop and develop, you eventually will go to like a carding camp where you're, you sort of, um, you know, try to train and get to the academy, which is like where I am right now. Um, which is like the main training ground for like trying to make the team eventually. So that's kind of the process that you have. 
pretty thorough. Wow, and it's yeah, it's yeah. much different than than the soccer one we have. Ours yeah. is just kind of you, you get a you get an email and then you join a team. <laughs> uh, <but> not, <laughs> it's true, it's, but that sounds really cool. You guys, I mean, the program sounds very developed, and it's awesome for the youth growing up to know about these opportunities. Um, you mentioned your coaches. What what kind of uh, inspiration or did, how what's the word? How did they motivate you? Was it just being there, or was it more than just being there? It's the, it was definitely more than just being there for sure. Um, I think uh, like somebody like Mike Frogley or Jake Jaworski, two guys who are probably uh, best coaches I've had. Um, definitely guys who are really thinking about their players. You know, it's not just about winning or losing for them. It's more about actually like playing as a team and like growing, you know, and it's not just about the sport either. It's about beyond the sport. It's about everything about that, you know, like you learn things mm-hmm. through the sport that will help you in the future. Right. And I think that's probably one of the most important things is like, you know, I didn't like when I played basketball, I didn't just learn how to play basketball. I learned how to grow up, how to be a good human being. And like, and that's probably one of the most important things and best thing I've ever learned. Right. So like, that's what I think. That's awesome. Man. You know, uh, it's always great to have mentors in your, in your, in your sport and that they understand that sport is more than just being on the court or on the pitch. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah. everything beyond that. It's the being on the pitch is like 10% of it and everything else is becoming a better human being. As you said, mm-hmm. that, that's yeah. pretty awesome to share. So, um, you know, thank you for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, with, <laughs> With, with that said, if you're not training, if you're not traveling, if you're not studying, if you're not working, what do you do for fun? He doesn't uh, have time for fun. Do you not hear everything <laughs> that he, he's involved with? <laughs> I know, I know, but you got to do something. Uh, um, lately, it's been tough to have a lot of fun because of COVID. Um, usually, I'd be like going out with my friends and stuff and like we'd be chilling, you know, driving around, stuff like that. Uh, I've got, I mean, I'm playing a lot of video games lately just because obviously I have to be at home a lot of the time. I'm forced to be at home, so that's kind of the thing. Um, I've been trying to do, like, a, like a bit of reading and stuff, reading books and stuff, you know, trying to learn a little bit as I don't go to school right now. So, uh, But other than that, um, you know, just talking to friends and stuff. Basketball is kind of a big part of that, right? Because I, I when I go to basketball, it's like, oh, I get to see everybody and get to see people. So that's probably, like, the biggest part it's not just basketball it's like socializing too it seems like so that's mm-hmm. it must have been really strange to be at the pan am center and have you guys be amongst one of the only people that are in there um just those regular noises vibrations whatever that you would normally hear when you're in there because people are people are watching you the whole time you, you guys are right underneath the walking track there um, people stopping, looking, curious, which is kind of cool. What does that feel like to sort of have that space to yourself and for it to be quiet? Is it kind of eerie or do you find that you're more focused on what you're doing because you don't have those distractions? Um, I think it does help with like focus and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. Just because, yeah, it is tough because, like, honestly, that building is a very bu- busy building. Like, when there's no COVID, like, it is busy. Like, it is crazy how many people are on the track. And, like, right now, we're actually having construction on two of the courts. So there's actually, like, nobody else in the building. Like, the only people that are there are my bosses, basically. So, like, it is really nice to have that, like, um, to ourselves, especially because now we can, um, like, even today, they're playing music and stuff. So that was nicer, just being able to have that time playing music and sort of just enjoy the time we have, like, mm-hmm. on court yeah. and stuff, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I can understand. Tammy, don't you go to a gym? Like, if, when you walk into a gym and you see it's empty, that's the best feeling. You got <laughs> access to everything. So <laughs> I totally understand. Like, I get, I mean, I would go, I went to Centennial College, so I'm, a five minute walk from the Pan Am Center and I would go yeah. to the go to the track and I see you guys training. It's just so cool to see you guys, but I understand having mm-hmm. an empty court, just being able to do what you gotta do without any distractions. You know, that's pretty yeah. dope. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I do I do like the people there for sure. Like it's yeah. nothing against them or anything. It's just nice to have my space, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. The empty gym, Tammy. It's the empty gym. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, what was I going to say? I have my questions out here in front of me, taped. Uh, 
what's my next question? Oh, um, you mentioned you having cerebral palsy and you mentioned calcification. Can you go about your diagnosis and how it affected you and how you kind of coped with the changes? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so my, so yeah, CP, cerebral palsy. Um, so when I was younger, um, about three, I had just only one surgery. Um, I, it, at the time, it was an experimental surgery. So they actually weren't really sure. Like doctors in Manitoba were saying that it wasn't gonna actually do what they want. They were saying I was gonna be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. But I went to Minneapolis um, Shriners um, and they did a surgery and it ended up working. So I have full ability to walk, run, jump, all that stuff. Nothing that they expected me to be able to do, which is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. As far as wheelchair basketball goes, um, with my disability, so I'm a class three. So the way they do class classifying for wheelchair basketball, it's mostly about um, just your upper body. They do worry about the lower body a little bit, but it's just because like, of course you are using your upper body for everything you do, right? The only reason they do worry about the lower body is if you aren't able to press against like your foot plate again. Like, like if you're able to press against your foot plate, that's a very big advantage, right? Just being able to push. So that's um, one thing. But um, yeah, it's mostly face, uh, focused on the upper body. So your ability to have core, like use your core and balance yourself out and be able to reach out farther with your arms and not fall over and being able to get back up after you fall forward. Because if you're like leaning forward into a push, you want to still be able to come back up after you push, right? So like that's one more thing that they look at. So it's, it's so with me, I'm able to use my core. So like I can pretty much move anywhere I need to. The only thing that I'm not able to do really as well is use my left arm to like catch passes and like throw passes. Like I can't use my left hand as well. Like I still am, but it's just harder for me. So yeah. That's Man, so much multitasking. <laughs> you gotta yeah. do. Yeah. And yeah. so quick. Oh my gosh. But just watching <laughs> you guys, I just <laughs> it's it's quite a sport. I think that uh wheelchair basketball and wheelchair rugby. <laughs> aggressive right y'all are moving so fast on those on those um uh courts and the impact between wheelchairs and the falls and yeah. i'm always like oh don't get your arm caught <laughs> <laughs> yeah a few times it does get caught <laughs> no understandable and i just want to go back to a bit in the beginning of what you said about not accepting no as an answer it, uh, oh, you would never walk, um, you know, and you guys, and you took the, you took the risk of this experimental surgery and it paid off and, you know, that, that takes guts, you know, uh, not many people understand that, that when they're told no, that thing, okay, especially when it's coming from professionals, professionals, <laughs> and, um, you know, that takes a lot of guts to go out and just do what you feel like you gotta do and, I, I commend that and it takes it on <laughs> cojones, yeah. as they would say in Spanish. <laughs> um, well, Josh, I imagine you got a lot of your, um, I don't know, chutzpah, I don't know what you would call it, um, from your, your dad. I don't know. He seemed, uh, from what you said, to be very involved with your uh, sport activity throughout your yeah. your youth. Um, yeah. He was probably quite an advocate for, for you being included in the variety of sports that you participated in um, mm -hmm. and him standing there and you know at your side as a coach through mm -hmm. all of these opportunities is, is pretty remarkable yeah yeah for sure did he have a hard time when you moved away um i don't know honestly that's the thing is uh with my parents is like of course of course like you know, I always love hanging out with my parents. I always love spending time with my parents. My parents are the best, right? You know, they love me. My mom was the one who decided to, you know, like you were saying, my mom was the one who decided to um, send me to go to Shriners and do that experimental surgery. So I've always, you know, that's always been like a great thing for me because she was willing to say, hey, you know, like, I'm not going to let this happen. I'm going to let my son be able to walk and things. So like, I've always loved that about it. And my dad, you know, uh, he's always helped me with sports, right? Even when I was like, with disabilities it's hard because I wasn't very good at sports but he was always coaching and like putting me out there so you know it's always been a big part of my life so yeah I think they were I don't know I think my mom was a little more, I remember my grandma actually it's funny you say that my grandma cried at the airport when I left actually 
my mom wasn't able to drop me off because she she had to she had to work and my dad had to work but i remember my grandma was there and my grandpa was there my grandpa cried a little bit my grandma cried very noticeably as i was leaving which is pretty sad because Aww. yeah i haven't seen her for a bit but uh yeah Aww. i think i think they were i think i i honestly do think they were sad yeah <laughs> are, are you an only child no i actually have a brother and a sister yeah okay all right yeah. um yeah they're both older um my brother's a pharmacist and my sister uh she was uh she was a cook um but now she's in going into education so she's doing that right now so, so mm -hmm. good for her you need more teachers yeah. out there definitely yeah, good sure. teachers <laughs> yeah she, she'll be a good one don't worry <laughs> You get to know you have that support um, back in you, especially when you make those decisions. So um, I'm sure they miss you, but I'm sure they're so proud of you, man. Uh, with that said, is go with a bit of a scenario. You're in Tokyo. Um, mm -hmm. You're in the you're in the change room. You see your brothers wearing the red and white beside you. Mm -hmm. Do you have any pregame rituals? What goes through your head? Um, uh, usually with me, man, honestly, I'm kind of a music guy. So like when I'm like in the locker room, I'm like jamming. Like, and even people say this nowadays, when I walk into the gym to practice, I'm always wearing headphones. Even when I'm working out, always wearing headphones. So I'm a guy who likes to just zone in on the music quickly, right before like the coach talks or whatever. So like I'm listening to music. I am chilling with the guys, but I'm, I'm jamming out to my music. So that's usually my, my routine before games. Mm. Yeah, understandable. And well, how would your teammates or your coaches describe you? It depends which coach or teammate you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely does. Um, it's it's hard. I think a lot of them think that um, a lot of them would say that I'm a hardworking guy. Like I don't take no for an answer. Um, my teammates would probably say I'm. Um, yeah, they probably say the same thing. I think. I think that's one of the things I've always been known for. Even when I was in like grade eight. I um, we had a graduation because it was like grade eight for us was graduation and uh, they had a award for me and it was like it was like the never give up award. So it was like because I was when I was a kid, I played sports there and they would always fall down on my knees. I always have elephant knees, they always say, but I would always stand up and just keep going. But I would always have cuts and bleeding stuff, blood, blood all over my knees and stuff. But it was, <laughs> yeah. Um, some people would. I would say that's stubborn, but no, it's just hard work and passion, you know. So mm -hmm. I commend that. I commend that so much. Um, yeah, there's a fine line be between between all that stubborn and passion. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can definitely tell you're a hardworking dude. Uh, for the future kids and the future generations, or the current generations watching this, they they're going through the struggles. Um, they want to be, they see you, they, I want to be like this dude, I want to go to the Paralympics. What advice would you give them? You know, I would, my advice probably would be always be willing to listen because I think the one thing that people have a tough time to is they're always willing to talk, but they're not really willing to fully listen to other people, right? Especially people like ahead of them, right? Because like, think about if you're young, there are so many people older than you that know so many more things than you. And with, especially with a sport like this, there's so many things you can learn. Like this unbelievably amount of, unbelievable amount of things you can learn about this sport. It is so complicated. Like even to this day, I think like somebody like Pat Anderson would say he doesn't know everything about the sport and he's been playing for like, I don't even know, like 20 something, 30 years probably. Like it's crazy. So to be able to just listen to somebody, somebody like Mike Frogley, somebody like Mateo, who's our senior coach, something like that is a really big quality that you can just learn because you know, some of us get st stuck up in our ways and think we know everything, but there's a lot to learn, you know. Mm -hmm. That's good that you recognize that because you can be an expert and still not know everything. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. <laughs> and a lot of the time, people think people will say that they're good listeners. I'm like, are you? Because <laughs> yeah. they'll, they'll just come with a response right away. I mean, they don't really take the time to take in information and put that information to you. So. Uh, yeah. that's, it's something we all struggle with personally. I can say I'm a good listener, but eh, there's, we all, we, <laughs> we, we, we all, all have our moments, man. We all have our moments. Yeah. It's, it's funny that you guys are talking about that because, um, I've been doing so many of these virtual meetings lately, um, 
I have a sign up in front of me that says, stop, listen, think. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> because I'm trying to listen more rather than talking so much, which I sometimes <laughs> do. <laughs> trying, uh, trying. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> um, what's it going to say? Uh, I guess you've had so many mentors and um, you, the advice you would give is to yes and more, but what have you, is there anything else you've yearned throughout your entire experience competing, training that really sticks to you? Yeah. Um, I remember I was, I was one practicing one day and I had a, I was just having a rough time because I was thinking, I was being very negative about my ability to shoot. I was taking, it was supposed to be, I was supposed to be working on faders in the key, right? So like fadeaway shots in the key. And I was having a rough time just not being able to hit. And I remember Frog went up to me and he's like, and what he said to me, he's like, um, cockiness is thinking you're better than somebody. And confidence is thinking you're good at something. Or think, yeah, confidence is thinking you're good at something. So like, and that kind of stuck with me because, you know, like I could say like, somebody's a better shooter than me or something like that but that doesn't mean i'm not a good shooter that just means they might be a bit better than me but that doesn't mean i can't get better right so that kind of stuck with me really well yeah. because i have a tough time with my confidence and stuff i get very negative sometimes in my own abilities so that really stuck with me well and i really remembered that quite well that's gonna you surround yourself with so many people that can provide you with good advice and that mm -hmm. the fact that you remember yeah. that quote is <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't remember stuff like that. I wish I did. <laughs> Especially when you're in a sport and you're working on this one, this one aspect of your sport, and you could get really stuck in a rut. So to have someone come in and it kind of wake you up a bit, that yeah. that's that's awesome. That's awesome to have someone there to just like smack it out. Of you. Yeah, you got this, man. Just you know, just gotta take a second. Just yeah, just yeah. breathe. <laughs> Um, uh, you mentioned, uh, you're working on your fadeaway. What kind of training do you guys do? Is it all, I'm assuming you guys do like weight room stuff or. Yeah. More, sure. Yeah. So what kind of training do you guys do? Um, so most of the training we're doing right now with COVID, um, we do, we train like five times a week. Um, so it's five practices a week. Um, we do two workouts. So Tuesday and Thursdays are our workouts. Um, we get tested for COVID though every day. Or every sorry Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So like the oh, things we don't good. work out, we get tested. Wow. Yeah. So it's pretty good actually. It makes us. It actually makes me feel pretty safe to be honest. Because I'm like, oh, I'm never. Yeah, gonna... that's amazing. Right. And do they do the testing all on site at the Pan Am Center, or yeah, do you guys yeah, have to go test, somewhere? Else? Just, you just walk in and then they test you and then they text you later during practice. And like, perfect. It's always great, so yeah, so it's perfect. And yeah, and then yeah, we practice like two to three. It's supposed to be two hours. Um, per day, but it's about two and a half because we get there a little earlier and get shots up and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's been pretty good, honestly. It's it's a really fun time spending time with the boys and stuff. And what position are you on the on the team? Uh, so it's like for wheelchair basketball, like in stand up, they do like position like point guards, shooting, yeah, all that. Um, in wheelchair basketball, we don't really do that in a sense. Like we do kind of like we have bigs and we have littles. That's what we call it, right? So littles would be like low class guys. Right, bigs are, and littles. Sort of, yeah. It kind of works that way a little bit. It's like it's based on disability, right? So our littles would be okay. class ones, guys who are not going to go out there and just like score twenty points in a game and stuff like that, because that's like what a big would do in a sense, right? Um, that's what in a sense, right? But um, but yeah. So how we play it is our bigs would kind of be the guys ball handling or the guys trying to get inside. Our littles are working the guys inside, so they'll try to set picks, set seals, and of course, if they can get in and score, well, they'll do that, right? But. You know, it's just their their main job is sort of trying to get the bigs inside. And then we have like since that's then, then we have one like mid class usually. Um with our lineup we would have you one mid class and that guy would usually be a guy who can score. So we like in our case our starting lineup is um Tyler, Lee, Bo, Pat, Nick. So it's two four fives, Nick and Pat. Um Lee is a class one, Tyler's class one five, and Bo is our class three. Bo's a really good shooter. And he's a really good ball handler, so we use that for him. Pat's a really good scorer. He's a really good at basically everything because he's the best player in the world. But he's really good at everything. Uh, Nick's there. He, he's very good at everything because he's a 4-5-2. And then Lee and Tyler, 
they're really they're really quick they're really smart and they can shoot but their main job is to get pat and nick inside because we want those guys scoring because it's the easy shot for us right so that's kind of how it works so, high five maybe if i explain that right <laughs> yeah yeah it makes sense i mean for me it does because our it, soccer is somewhat seven aside soccer is somewhat the same um yeah. but Jamie, i hope you understood <laughs> Oh, good. I'm following. I'm following along. Right. I work in sport. Right. I don't play sport. <laughs> That's good. It's awesome, awesome. No, sorry. I paddleboard. That's a sport. So. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. I Perfect. Do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Throwing that in. Okay. Uh, I was checking the rankings the other day, and Canada's ranked 12, I believe, and Great Britain is 1. Um, what do you guys, how do you guys, what how do I phrase it? What do you guys think you guys have to do to bridge that gap? So with that ranking, the thing about that ranking was, is um, the tournament that happened with that ranking, there was, it was kind of, I don't want to say it was a fluke because it wasn't a fluke, but because it happened. But w I think our team is a better representation of 12 because our team, Team Canada has won two golds, three silvers in between 20, 2000 and like 2015 or something like that. Like we've won a bunch of medals. So to say Canada's in 12th right now is a pretty tough thing. GB for sure yeah. is in fourth. First, GB is a very good team. They, the way they play their team, they do a very good job. But I think Canada, our issue right now is um, we just need to find a job, better job playing together and we need to find a better job playing better D. Our, our defense is where we're lacking, right? And um, I think coming into the Paralympics, like we really improved the way we play together and our defensive reads and stuff. Like we've, we've really worked well together and stuff and worked hard. Um, and we'll see what happens. Like, I honestly think with my feeling, I think we have the ability to get in the top five, if not top three, potentially. But that's, again, just me. So that could be a different opinion. But yeah. that's what I think based upon what I've seen from my boys in the team. So, yeah, it makes so sense. did all of these other countries, did they qualify for the Olympics? Like the ones between 1 and 12. Would all of those countries have qualified for the Olympics? Um, not guaranteed. Um, okay. It, it depends what happens because so each, like each right. certain countries have Edit their own qualifying thing. events. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it depends. Okay. Do you know how many teams are actually going to Tokyo? I actually am not sure exactly. It's probably around like okay. at least fifteen, probably or sixteen. I don't know. Yeah, those those rankings. Seem oh, oh for I, just I have oh. it here. Hold on, I have it here. The wheelchair <laughs> basketball competition features twelve men's teams and ten women's teams. Only twelve. Interesting. Okay, I didn't know that. That's good. Yeah, so you learned something today. Yeah, <laughs> I did learn something. That's awesome. My own sport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those um, rankings. So would you say don't that make that's, sense. Sorry, what's that? T. Those rankings don't make sense. Eh, well, it's, it's very <laughs> interesting to me that wheelchair basketball aligns with soccer in the rankings. Yeah, it? that's pretty interesting. It does. But Canada's yeah. para, para mm. soccer team, there, was it 12th or 11th? One or the other. I, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's but, and then on this, on this listing here, which I think is actually from the wheelchair basketball uh, website, which I think is great that the, the rankings are, are right there on the side of, yeah. it's, it's, you don't have to look anywhere, but, but yeah. Yeah. according to you, they're not right. Oh, they're not, they're not right. They're right. They're not they're right. Not, right. <laughs> not right. We'll see, we'll see what happens. All right. We don't, we don't really right. know yet. <laughs> exactly, oh. exactly. <laughs> um. Like that side, man. And everything you've talked about so far, everything from training to your story, um, for me, you're you're an inspiration. Uh, but with all this stuff going on with cancel culture and all that, um, and I'm sure other kids and other youth see you as an inspiration. Do you have to be careful of what you say to social media and, and people reaching out to you? um yeah you definitely do like i try to just stay off social media for the most part like i look at things but i don't really post much um there are guys that do post things um uh sometimes and they do like at paralympics um there are a lot of talks about how you have to like be careful what you post you can't post certain things you can't write certain things on instagram so there are things like that and if you do you get like fined or something or your mm -hmm. program i don't know fined to the program or something i don't really know the whole protocol but 
um, there are definitely like um, things you have to watch out for on social media. In my case, not really right now, but uh, yeah, there definitely are. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never thought about that, that the Paralympics Olympics would have rules for what you can and cannot post on social media. I mean, that that makes sense. I just would never have thought about that before. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of things to think about when it comes to social media and um, <clears throat> how you portray yourself, your sport, your country, and your sponsors, everything. Just uh, mm. so much to consider. Just like a <laughs> yeah. time bomb. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't have any further questions. You pretty much covered everything. Tammy, do you have any further questions? No, that, that was great. I do have a speed round that, you know, I oh, like yes. to do. My favorite part. Yeah, the speed round is fun. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not going to give you time to think of an answer. You just gotta, you just gotta hit us with the first thing that comes to your, your head. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Um, you were talking about all the other sports that you play. Can you, can you sort of. What what other sports do you play? Just like let's list them off. Like currently or like in the past? Well, in the past. Because currently past, okay. you're focusing a hundred percent on wheelchair basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Um, yeah. Um, so I played uh, sledge hockey, soccer, stand up soccer, uh, volleyball, mm -hmm. uh, stand up basketball, badminton, track, which included uh, different running events, and then um, hand for. I can't remember what it's called, like toss, ball toss or something. Um, mm -hmm. And then flag football. Uh, I played a little bit of wheelchair tennis, a little bit, but not very much, like a few practices, but I didn't get a lot of time. That's another that. tough sport. You've got to be quick. I have that neck. I've not seen that played, but I just envision it being tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It definitely very is. You tough. have to be really, you have to be able to like hold a, a a racket while being able to push, so it's like a lot of extra work. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's a fun do, time. How do you do that? And do they? they <laughs> sorry, I, now I need to ask more questions. Do they normally play doubles or is it singles? Um, it's like it's the same stand up basically. You can do both either way, but um, the difference is like they get an extra bounce is the thing. So you get two bounces instead of one. Oh, two bounces. And do they use the yeah, same yeah. size court? Yeah, so the same size. So like what they do is they okay. usually play a lot farther back because of the okay. bounce. There's two bounces. And it's a lot, it's a little slower, but if you get into a higher level, it gets pretty fast, right? So. And would they use a different kind of ball that would slow down the bounces? No, no, they use the same the ball. Same Everything's the same, okay. yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite sport to watch? Uh, football, probably, NFL football. Okay. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite musician? My favorite musician, uh, my favorite, oh, I don't have, oh, shoot, I can't think of a favorite musician. <laughs> to be honest with you, like, I'm a big music guy, but I listen to so much different music, so um, yeah. we'll just say. Um, we can say band, musician, song. One or, give, me, give me one of those. Band. Just not one of everything. Just hit me with one thing that you really like. Um, okay, I'll give, um, I'll give, um, uh, a musician. Wow, I'll give a musician. Tough one. This is a top okay. one for you. I listen to so much music. It's <laughs> hey, like everywhere. We're on a time schedule here. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, let's go. Let's go. Uh, Kendrick Lamar. We'll say Kendrick Lamar. Okay. 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 Yeah, All right. I even know who that is. Really? Wow. Okay. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> I know. I know. Wouldn't be able to tell you a song that he was singing. It's a hymn, right? Yeah. I know that. I know yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Favorite movie. Favorite movie? Um, mm -hmm. Shoot, I wish that was a movie, but it's not. Um, I, I'm not very good at thinking of things quick. Uh, <laughs> I got out of time. I'm gonna come... of these Space Jam. Space Jam is a good movie. Space Jam, okay. Yeah, um, sure. What is something new you would like to learn? Something new I'd like to learn? I'd like to mm -hmm. learn a new language. Something like German or French or something. My mom speaks French, but I never learned French, unfortunately. So, okay, you did, yeah. you were you didn't have to learn French in high school. Um, not high school. I had to learn when I was younger, but uh, we had an unfortunate situation where our teacher wasn't very good, um, and we had like <laughs> teachers like coming in and out because like one of them was like one had one got pregnant and had like to take maternity leave, and then another one came in, 
and she wasn't very good. And like, we didn't really learn a lot. We just watched a lot of shows. So we didn't learn a lot. Yeah. Best year ever. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you could meet one person dead or alive, who would it be? What? Meet anybody. One anybody. Person. Dead or alive. If I could meet one person. You know what? I would probably say, uh, probably say Russell Wilson. He's my, he's my favorite quarterback. He plays for the Seattle Seahawks. If you watch NFL football, you know who he is. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know why a, I said he's that. He's a current he's player still... now? Like, he still plays? Yeah, 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 right now, right now, yeah. Okay, all right. He's pretty good? Yeah, I said, I don't know. It's a weird ask. I think a lot of people probably think of something crazier than that, but, like, I'm just a simple That's guy. Fine, it's <laughs> what you like. I don't yeah. judge it. I'm just, you know, just following up. Let's some more questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, oh, single best day of your life so far? Aside from today, of course. Single? <laughs> Besides, of course, you know, of course. Um, probably, uh, probably playing my first Canada games. It's probably one of the single best for you. Like when I played the first game, I would, I would say probably. Which was, I don't know, I don't really remember the stats or any of the moments really of the game, but I just remember that, how it felt. And it felt a lot, it felt really good in a sense, just because I got to finally play on a court against a lot of other athletes and I don't remember what team we played but I do remember we probably lost like by 60 or something points because at that time we had lost every game by at least 50 points so like wow. yeah it was pretty rough but uh it was but a it good turn your heart happy so that's good yeah yeah it was a fun time we had to hang out and stuff so it was a good time um okay I have one more one more one more one more uh something on your bucket list yeah, on my bucket list I think I would like to do. Um, I'd actually like to go travel somewhere. I mean, like, I know I'm going to travel with the team a little bit, hopefully, but I want to travel somewhere where I don't think I'll go. Somewhere like, uh, I don't know, like Greece or something. Greece would be really cool. I imagine, though, when you're traveling with the team or doing that kind of traveling, you actually don't get to see a lot of the scenes because you're so scheduled. Um, you probably don't get a lot of free time, and it's kind of like you fly in, do some training, play a game, and then you fly out. So yeah, um, yeah, for I sure. Imagine you, yeah, you don't get to see a, a lot of the sites. So yeah, um, I would highly recommend traveling because <laughs> once you're not young, <laughs> <laughs> you have you have this time between when you like work for a living and then when you can retire. <laughs> yeah. And, and when you're able to do a lot of traveling. So while you're young, that's the one thing I'll say. Just just do things that make you happy and travel. See the world. Get to experience new cultures and have lots of adventures. Lots of adventures. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, T, did you have any final thoughts? Uh, not really, no. I mean, I... I thought we had a great conversation. It was, mm -hmm. absolutely. you know, it was very Josh? inspiring. So, yeah. Absolutely. Josh, how about you? Any final thoughts? Um, I'm just I was happy to meet both of you. Um, I was hoping to maybe learn potentially a little bit more of Paris soccer. I really don't know much about it. Like I watched the video on a bit ago on YouTube about it just cause I had never, like I literally never watched it in my life. So I was interested and it was very interesting to watch. And like, I'd like to try maybe. Play with, yeah. You know, well, yeah. you know what? When COVID is over, mm -hmm. I come out to our club and you can do a training day maybe with Coach T or with our advanced soccer guys and we'll run you through some drills. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. That sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe we can, you know, switch you over to the soccer realm. <laughs> it's perfect. <though. laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure your coaches would love that. Oh yeah, for sure. My frogs will love to hear that later. For sure. That's okay. I'm not poaching athletes. It's all good. It's all good. All right. <laughs> okay. So with that, thank you so much for joining us today, Josh. It was really wonderful to get to know you and, and uh, chat about this great sport that I've watched for years and years and years. It's nice to get a little bit of background um, from one of uh, um, wheelchair basketball's uh, athletes. So thanks for joining us today. We'll hope to see Thank you guys again soon. Me.